but you're not black. Remember, we only kill black people. Yeah, we only kill black people, right? You're going to get in trouble. Jerry, they're going to hurt you. Jerry. Jerry, don't do it. Jerry, don't do it. Stop right there. Stop. 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 I have a right to stop you because you're being suspicious. Stop. Relax. Stop. I'm going home. Relax or I'm going to have Leave to change this alone. situation. Stop. Leave me alone. Stop. The district attorney investigating the case says that Elijah McLean dismissed the officer's requests for him to stop. The 23-year-old's family says he was just walking home. He was listening to music when Aurora, Colorado police approached him last August. <laughs> the DA says McLean was carrying a plastic bag when police tried to pat him down and he refused. He's then heard pleading with the police as they tackle him and use a chokehold on him. I have no good. I don't do that stuff. Paramedics later arrived at the scene. A medic gave McLean ketamine to sedate him. McLean was taken to the hospital. Three days later, he was pronounced brain dead. In the middle of a North Miami street, Charles Kinsey tried to coax an autistic man back to a mental health center. I was really worried, more worried about him than myself. You can hear Kinsey, a counselor, advising his patient. The young man in his 20s sat cross-legged while holding a white toy truck. Kinsey was unarmed, yet instinctively he kept his hands in the air. As long as I got my hands up, they're not going to shoot me. This is what I'm thinking. They're not going to shoot me. Wow, was I wrong? Kinsey said he heard two gunshots. He was hit once in his right leg. I'm like, I still got my hands in the air. I said, no, I just got shot. He really feels like he did everything that he could possibly do to cooperate. Hilton so, Napoleon is Kinsey's attorney. There's no justification for shooting an unarmed person who's talking to you and telling you that they don't have a gun and that they're, they're a mental health counselor. A second amateur video shows the aftermath as officers with long guns searched both men. They cuffed my hands and they flipped me over and I'm standing there and I'm like, sir, why did you shoot me? And his, ex and his words to me, he said, I don't know. You don't want to sign it? No, because I don't think that I deserve to pay $80 for something that is fixable and I can fix it. All right. if that's all you want Go ahead, to do. step out of the car. Why? Because you're under arrest. Step out. Step out of the vehicle. No, I'm not. Step out. No. Step out. I'm giving you a lawful order to step out. You be fair with me and I'll be fair with you. Step out. No. You're under arrest. No, I'm not. I'm placing you under arrest. Step you out. You are full of because you're not placing me under no arrest. Do not, do not oh, take shut off. Shut up and give me that and I'll sign it. Step out. No. no we're beyond that. Do you want Step me to out.
he would call me every day at work, you know, before this happened to him, you know, he would always, Dad, what are you doing? I tell him, I'm at work, Khalif, you know. Our relationship was really close. He's the son a father would always want. He was funny, you know, articulate, you know. And and for me seeing him in this condition, it's sad, you know, because I knew how he was before then, you know. And I have to come up here every day of seven years to watch my son in this condition. What they did through uh, our witness, they, uh, they brutalized my son. They beat him to a pulp and they tased him in the neck three times. And after all was said and done, he coded in the street. He died there. So the police officers, to me, were judge and jury executioner out in the street. They did street justice on him. So I found all of that out, you know, and it was very heartbreaking, you know, and I was very, very, very angry for what they did, you know, because they treated him like a piece of meat. He has a noxic brain injury lack of oxygen to his brain. This is the stage they left him in, what they call is a woke coma. So he's awoke his eyes is open, but he can, you know, function like you or I can. You know, he's not paralyzed or anything like that, but he has to be fed through a feeding tube in his stomach. So he don't have a breathing machine. He can breathe, but he has a catheter. He needs somebody right now, and I know that he knows that I'm here and I know he appreciates it. He can't tell me, but the way he looks at me and the way when I look at him and I know and he makes sounds and I talk to him and, and I know he appreciates it. I know he's, he appreciates it. Look at that smile. He's keeping me going too, you know. This gives me a reason to come up here to see him. You can put your hands down, Jazz. No way. Dude's got a gun. Next thing you know, I got six warning shots in my back. I do have a okay. firearm on okay. me. Don't reach for it then. Don't pull it out. Don't pull it out. Do you have any idea how hard it is to prosecute a cop? You heroes have killed a dozen people this week. What are you going to do next week? Kill a dozen more.
Good morning to you, George. Police say this officer fired a total of 49 times and he's on trial here for the next few weeks because prosecutors say he reloaded during the gunfire. He faces up to 25 years in prison, is not expected to testify at this trial, and a judge will decide this case. Take a look for yourself. This 22-mile high-speed police chase through Cleveland involving more than 100 police officers that went terribly wrong. And this morning, one of those officers, a former Marine, is fighting for his freedom. Mr. Grillo, who was the driver of Zone Car 217, fired at least 49 times. Authorities have charged 31-year-old Michael Brelo with voluntary manslaughter for what happened at the end of that police chase after police had already fired nearly 100 shots at the fleeing car. Prosecutors have produced this animation showing the chase, adding the real-time police radio traffic. Listen for the gunfire, the shooting lasting less than 18 seconds. Authorities say Brelo got on top of the hood of the victim's Chevy Malibu in November 2012 and fired 15 times through this windshield. Prosecutors say they have evidence it was Brelo who killed 43-year-old Timothy Russell and 30-year-old Melissa Williams. He's pleading not guilty. I've never been so afraid in my life. In an interview with investigators, Brelo said he thought the couple was shooting back. I thought my partner and I would be a shot and that we were going to be killed. At which point, I drew my weapon and I shot through the windshield. Nineteen-year-old Austin Harris is hospitalized at St. Mary's Medical Center. His attorney says he is in very serious condition. News Channel 5's Andrew Ruiz live this morning with the battle his parents are fighting right now. Andrew. Mike, Austin Harris' parents haven't seen him since he walked away from a restaurant in Jupiter Monday night. They say he became agitated and left. We now know from detectives that he walked two miles towards his father, uh, father's house in the Mooring subdivision. Michelle Mishkin and John Stevens were in their garage when deputies say Harris, who did not know the couple, savagely attacked them. Both were fatally stabbed and Harris bit off part of John Stevens' face. Michelle Suskauer is their attorney and our WPTV legal analyst. She says his parents are devastated and are looking for many answers to the questions that we have as well. Regardless, Suskauer says they want to be by his side. We're going to continue to request that his parents be permitted to be there with him. He can't communicate. He's sedated and he's intubated, but they want to be there to hold his hand. Suskauer says that they are going to look into possible mental health issues with Austin.
get sick over me as much as you want to, but get more sick by the fact that the system was going to let that man walk without even a trial. I mean, the only reason you've seen witnesses, the only reason jurors are weighing evidence right now is because of those cameras, because of those microphones, and because of me. And if that kid had been white, you wouldn't be here right now. Oh, man. Where have you been? If the kid had been white, I wouldn't have to be here. Boy, but when that day comes, when society cries for black children with the same passion that it does for whites, when the senseless death of an African-American is just as unacceptable, then I'll stop. I'll stop. But the truth is, Mr. Rollins, that racism is going to outlive me. Matthew Bernard was suspected of murder, but it's not known why he stripped off all of his clothes and ran into the streets. An officer used mace to try to stop Bernard, but he kept on running straight at Lloyd Galden in a church parking lot. I was just saying, good Lord, get me out of it, and I was fighting him as much as I could. Bernard then took off down the road where he was stopped by officers working with a police dog.
They could blame anything on us, and everybody ready to believe it. Black on black crime. Huh? What is black on black crime? Black. I'm just tired of black folk killing black folk. Who you think killing Chinese and Chinese today, China today? <laughs> if we go to Italy tomorrow, who you think killing Italians in Italy? <laughs> and if 98% of all the white folks that was murdered last year was murdered by white folks, if y'all ain't talking about white on white crime, how they trick us to talk about black on black crime? You kill where you live. And he loved his master more than his master loved himself. That's why he didn't want his master hurt. If the master got sick, he'd say, what's the matter, boss? We sick? 